Welcome to React Course 1. In this episode, we'll learn how to create a new React project. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced developer, creating a new React project can be overwhelming. So let's break it down into smaller steps. First, you need to determine the platform for your app. If it's a mobile app, you can choose React Native or Ionic. If it's a desktop app, you may consider Electron. However, for this course, we'll focus on building a web app. So let's dive a bit deeper here. There are two main topics to discuss. How opinionated would be our tech stack and what rendering approach it will use. What does opinionated mean? Let's take Create React App as an example. When you scaffold a new project using CRA, you immediately get predefined ESLint, Jest, Webpack and other configurations. This means stack is opinionated. Now let's talk about trade-offs. With an opinionated stack, you gain stability and maintainability, but you sacrifice flexibility and add unnecessary dependencies to your project. On the other hand, with a non-opinionated stack, you have to implement everything yourself, which is riskier and much more time-consuming, but offers greater flexibility. Moving on to rendering approaches, we have client-side rendering, CSR and server-side rendering, SSR. Let's consider the trade-offs as well. With client-side rendering, you benefit from simplicity in development and maintenance. However, CSR applications may have less optimized behavior in production. On the other hand, SSR can provide better performance, but requires more knowledge and additional technologies. For this course, I chose CSR because it's easier to explain the main concepts of front-end development with less abstraction. Additionally, I don't want this course to be overcomplicated, so I prefer opinionated tooling. Previously, Create React App was the official suggestion. However, if you look at the React documentation now, you won't find it there anymore. To be honest, Create React App brings in too many unnecessary dependencies. There are also tools like Annex but it requires extensive knowledge to set up. So I decided to use Vite CLI, which is faster and gaining popularity. The main difference between Vite and Create React App is that Vite uses ESBuild for a much faster bundling process. Vite also suggests using Vtest as the default testing framework. Moreover, Vite CLI doesn't introduce as many unnecessary dependencies as CRA. However, there are still some trade-offs. For instance, when migrating a legacy production project from Webpack to Beat, there is a chance that certain libraries may not work, so be cautious. Or if you have a customized and deeply set up Webpack configuration, Vite might not provide enough flexibility for the bundling process. Additionally, setting up Vit with Jest can also pose some problems. But for this course, Vite CLI is the perfect choice because we want smooth and fast development process. So let's start creating a new project with Vite. Let's follow the Vite official documentation. I will use Yarn, but you can use any package manager you want. Last but not least, we need to decide whether we will be using JavaScript or TypeScript. In general, if you have a small project, TypeScript can be even worse than JavaScript. I know haters will argue that you must use TypeScript everywhere, but they're probably wrong. Anyway, we'll use TypeScript because knowledge of this technology is very important nowadays. So let's choose TypeScript in the Vite CLI. You may wonder what SWC is here. As we can read in the docs, it is a Rust-based technology which should replace Babel, and it also can be a bundler, but this part is under development. However, Vite uses the plugin, plugin React SWC, which has some restrictions. So, I prefer choosing standard TypeScript in the Vite CLI. Our app is scaffolded. Let's run yarn install and we're ready to go. In the next episode, we'll configure the development environment. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.